Well, good morning, uh, Mansfield Pentecostal Church, MPC, and good morning uh, to all those uh, online visitors who are dropping in on our service. I hope you have an ed edifying and an encouraging time in our morning worship today. Hey, uh, today we've got my dad. He's going to be uh, sharing from God's Word. And as well, as well as that, later on, we're going to be having uh, the breaking of bread. You know, just before I, I hand over to Kate, and she's going to do our, our morning kid slot, I came across a quote, quote recently, and it says this, God makes a promise. Faith believes it. Hope anticipates it. Patience waits for it. I'm going to say that again. God makes a promise. Faith believes it. Hope anticipates it. Patience waits for it. I want you to think about what has God promised you today? What are the promises of God over your life? Well, you know what? I believe that God has good promises over your life, but faith believes it. Hope anticipates it. Patience waits for it. Hey, listen, I'm going to hand over to Kate. She's going to do a kid slot, and I'll see you in a moment. God bless you. Hi, everybody. Thank you all for joining us this morning, and thank hello to all the young people joining us this morning. Um, just a few um, kids notices this morning. We have restarted our youth Zoom meeting on a Friday night, and that will be every Friday at 7 o'clock. Um, just for about an hour, uh, we do some games, uh, we have a little bit of a chat and we um, just talk about some Bible um, and Christian things. Uh, and if you would like the link for that, please do drop me a message on either on this comment section below on the YouTube page or you can do it on the Facebook page as well. Uh, we're also starting a new thing um, on a Sunday morning. It's called a junior church, which will be a Zoom meeting at half past nine on a Sunday morning. And that's for our primary school age children. Um, so the age is four to 11. But if you are older and you want to join in, we don't mind at all. Um, so if you want to get the link for that as well, you can drop me another message. And we'll just be doing some games and doing a bit of a Sunday school theme, so a Bible story um, that links up with the message in the morning. Um, so yeah, that'll be good. So this week, I want you to imagine your life is like being on a roller coaster. So I want you to imagine yourself on a roller coaster. So if you've ever been on a roller coaster, there are lots of twists and turns. Uh, one minute you can be really high up, and the next minute you can be dropping down, uh, and then there'll be flips and turns that turn you upside down and round around, and you, won't, you don't even know which way is up most of the time. So now, normally, you can see what's coming up on a roller coaster, can't you? When you're sat in the seat in the roller coaster, you can see whether you're gonna go up the track or down or upside down, or you can see what's gonna happen. So you can prepare yourself and brace yourself for what's coming up next. But I want you to imagine that your life roller coaster that you're on, um, that you are blindfolded. And this really made me think about this year, that our lives, especially this year, it feels like somebody has put a blindfold on us um, and we have no idea what is coming up next. Now, if you imagine being blindfolded on your roller coaster, I want, you, I want to ask you, do you think it would make you more scared or would you be more relaxed? I think personally, I would be more scared. Um, I like to know what's coming up, but I like to be able to brace myself. And not knowing what's coming up on a roller coaster, I think I would be nervous the whole time and just scared the whole time rather than being able to enjoy it. Now, I know some of you this week have got some big changes happening. Maybe some of you are going back to school for the first time um, in months and months and months, or maybe something in your life is happening that you didn't expect, or some, I think everybody's life at the moment in this whole year of 2020 is just something that we didn't expect, um, and it's something that we've never experienced before. Um, and maybe you can't even imagine what it's going to be like when you either get to school or do something in your life or what your life's going to be like next. And maybe it's kind of hard um, and you can't work out what's going to happen. Um, and it's kind of like that feeling of being blindfolded on a roller coaster. It can make you even more nervous 
and scared than usual. Now, just as you are imagining yourself on a scary life roller coaster, blindfolded, not knowing what's going to happen, I want you to imagine someone sat next to you, reaching over from the seat next to you and just grabbing your hand and holding your hand. And then they say to you, it's going to be okay. I am with you and I will never ever leave you. And I'm sure you all know who I'm gonna say that this person is. Yeah, it's God. And he's not just a friend that sat next to you who is just as scared as you are. He is the creator of not just your life roller coaster, but all the life roller coasters that have ever been made. And he knows exactly what's coming up next. And he knows exactly what's going to happen. He will be sat next to you the whole time and he'll be holding your hand for the whole ride of your life. And you know that feeling you get when you get off the roller coaster and you are super excited um, and that kind of buzz of amazement that you get? even though you were really nervous before you got on or while you were in the seat. Um, But then you look back and you think, I'm so glad I did it. That is what is, that is what it's like when you're life roller coaster, when you're on a life roller coaster with God. You'll get off, take your blindfold off, look back and say, wow, God got me through all of that. And it was absolutely amazing. Now this morning, I just want to leave you with a verse that's going to get you through some challenging times and this week particularly for most of you. Um, And it's in Joshua 1 verse 9 and it says, Be strong and brave. Don't be afraid because the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I just want to pray for you all this morning because I know it's going to be a tough week for some of you. And I just want you to know that God has got you. Lord Jesus, I pray for every single young person watching this morning and all the young people that we are connected to with the church. I pray, Lord Jesus, whatever challenges they are facing, especially this week and the weeks to come, that they know that you are with them. They are not alone, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that they feel you right next to them wherever they go, whether they go into a school or whichever situation they go into, that they feel you right with them and that they know that they can be strong and brave because they have got the Lord and the creator of all the heavens and all the earth with them always. Amen. Thank you, everyone, and I'll see you next week. And I'll hand back over to Matt. Well, thank you, Kate, for uh, sharing that kids' lot. And I hope all you children out there were listening to what Kate had to say. Well, you know what? Just before my dad uh, comes to share from God's Word, I'm going to read to you a few verses of Scripture. And you have your Bibles. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to be reading from verses 8 through to 14. And I want to read to you uh, these words, which is around uh, the message that we are about to, to listen to. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. May God bless the reading of his word. I'm now going to hand over to my dad, who's going to share from his word. Well, good morning, MPC. Uh, It's wonderful to be with you again, albeit in a way that we're not used to. Um, We're hoping and we're praying that this whole coronavirus thing will uh, fizzle out sooner rather than later so that we can get back to a bit of normality in our lives. Uh, If I was to give my uh, little message a, a, a title this morning, I suppose 
I would call it, it's, it's time to switch the lights on. It's time to switch uh, the lights on. In um, 19th century Germany, um, there was once a, a philosopher uh, and he was sitting on a, a bench in uh, Frankfurt in, in Germany and he was a bit disheveled looking, a bit untidy and uh, the uh, park keeper uh, looked upon him one morning and he said, who are you? Who are you? Um, to which he replied, I would to God I knew. I would to God I knew. He had uh, an identity crisis. And I think today that there's people that are having identity crisis in their lives. Now, before we became Christians, maybe, maybe that was true of us. We, we didn't know why we were here. We, we lacked purpose. We, we didn't know who we were. But, but now that we have become Christians, uh, our, our lives have taken on a new purpose. And we now know who we are. Uh, my son Matthew, he's uh, read the scriptures to you, and there's one particular uh, expression that was used in that passage of scripture that I want to zoom in on uh, this morning, if I, if I can. And it very simply says this, live as children of light. So who are we? Well, we are, we are children of light. Now, in the passage of Scripture and in the previous verses um, that Matthew read to you, um, the Apostle Paul tells us um, why we need to live our lives in, in, in a different way. Um, he, he tells us, you know, the, the judgment of God is coming upon people if they live like this. And he gives us numerous reasons, but in verse 8, he tells us it's time to switch the lights on because of who we are. We were once in darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. It is time to switch the lights on. Now let me, let me just share with you some very simple thoughts this morning, some very sim simple principles uh, from the passage of Scripture that was read to us about living our lives as children of light. Just, just three things very quickly. First of all, children of life or, or of light have, have a dark history. Or if you want, we had, we had a dark past. Now in verse 8, it tells us there, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Now, Paul tells us we are God's holy people. Uh, he tells us that, as I've said already, that the judgment of God is coming upon this world because of the way in which they live their lives. But here, he gives us a profound reason why we must now live differently. Because he says, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Um, he has taken us out of darkness. Friends, we need to, to realize what, what a, a profound miracle the new birth is. When conversion takes place in somebody's life, it's just not the turning over of a new leaf, but it's getting a new life. And we, are, we have been taken out of darkness and we've been placed into the kingdom of light. In the late 1930s, uh, Nazism was taking a, a grip in, in, in Europe and um, a, a, a military leader, he was coined with this expression. He says, they are switching the lights out all over Europe. We were in the place where the lights were out. You may recall the Bee Gees. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing this to you. But they had a song. 
and the lights all went out in Massachusetts. I can hear you humming that already. <laughs> the lights all went out in Massachusetts. Friends, uh, we were not just in a mess, we were a part of the mess. We were not just in the dark, we were darkness. We have a past history, we have a dark history, but thank God that has changed. Now we are children of light. I am thinking about a Charles Wesley hymn that kind of sums up what I'm talking about, and I know you'll be, you'll be humming this when I, when I read this uh, verse from uh, a Charles Wesley hymn goes like this Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's, uh, uh, and nature's night. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke the dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee long. My imprisoned spirit lay fast bound in sin and nature's night. But at conversion, something wonderful took place. We were taken out of this terrible darkness and we became children of light. And this morning, we should be humbled to, to realize what the Lord has done for us when he came into our lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, children of life have a, a, a dark history, but as we uh, continue to examine this passage of Scripture, we also see that, that children of light uh, live a fruitful life. Notice what it says there in verse 9. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. In, in other words, um, the light that we have in the Lord re reveals itself through us in three ways according to the Apostle Paul here. He says goodness, righteousness, truth. Those things should characterize our lives. I've got a quote from a well-known American writer by the name of Charles Swindle. This is what he says when people are examining our lives. What will they see? They will see your good works, goodness. Jesus said, like what? They will, they will hear your courtesy. They will detect your smile. They will notice that you stop to thank them. They will hear you apologize when you were wrong. They will see you help when they are struggling. They will notice that you are the one who stopped along the road and gave them a hand. They will see every visible manifestation of Christ's life being normally lived out through you. I read in a book that a man called Christ went about doing good. It is very disconcerting to me that I am easily satisfied with just going about. I hope you got that. I read in a book that a man called Christ went about doing good. I trust that we're not just satisfied with going about. Let's go about and do good. Um, I've always been um, a fan of, um, of a Dutch lady. Uh, this Dutch lady, her name, and you'll probably recognize it as, as, as soon as I say it, Corrie ten Boom. Uh, she, along with her sister, were, were, were put into a, a concentration camp 
um, during the Second World War because they, in Holland this was, because they dared to help um, Jews. Um, it must have been a terrible time, obviously. But, but Corrie ten Boom's father was a, was a, a seller of watches and a, and a repairer of watches. And I just, I just love this story. In, in one of her books, uh, she tells the story of her father, who was a, a, a watchmaker. And a very wealthy man walked into his shop one day, and it was quite apparent that he had uh, a lot of money. And uh, he, he purchased a, a very expensive watch from Corey's uh, father. And at that point, the, the rich man said, this watch that I have here, I, I took it to a, a competitor of yours to see if he could repair it, but he, he, couldn't, he couldn't fix it. Uh, and so I've come to just to purchase this expensive watch here. And then Corey's father did something quite significant. He said, could I see your watch, please? The rich man took the broken watch from his wrist and handed it to Corey's father, and he fiddled with it, and he worked at it just for a few seconds. He says, it should be fine now. And he handed it back to the rich man, and he says, now, you give, me, you give me back the, my watch that I gave you, and I'll give you back your money. Corey was horrified. They needed the money. And then Corey's father escorted him to the door, the rich man to the door, and as, as was customary, he, he bowed before the man, and off he went. And, and Corey said, Father, why, why did you do that? We, 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 we need the money. And he, and he said, do you think the Lord would be glorified if I had not said anything or I had not tried to fix that man's watch? But we needed the money. No, do not worry, Corey. God, he owns the cattle on a thousand hill. He'll look after us. Now, that's to me. That's goodness on display. Goodness. Just doing a good thing like that. Righteousness. Just living the right life. Truth. These things should be bursting out of our lives. Bursting out of our, our lives. A, a Christian... Uh, is someone who, who helps fight truth decay. Did you get that? <laughs> we have heard a lot about tooth decay, and I've known a lot about that over the years, but as Christians, we need to fight truth decay by living the truth out in our lives. Um, Spurgeon, on one occasion, uh, somebody came to him and said if, they, if he could write about his life. And Spurgeon said, he says, write my life in the skies. I have nothing to hide. Oh, for such a life as that, that the light of Christ will shine through us. Goodness, righteousness, and truth. Friends, I'm not talking about perfection here because you're looking at somebody who's far from being perfect. And the person who read the scriptures knows that as, as well as anybody else. Children of light are not perfect, but we will not make a habit out of being bad. Children of light sometimes do wrong, but will we'll not make a habit of, of doing wrong and will not make a habit of being false. Live a fruitful life, and that fruitful life is revealed through our goodness and through our righteousness and through our truth. So, children of life, yeah, we've got a dark history, but things have changed. When we bow the knee before Jesus, we became children of life. We have a dark history, uh, 
we live a fruitful life. And then, in conclusion, uh, children of light make a significant impact. Notice what Paul says in verse 11. He says, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that we don't mix with people who are not Christians. If we don't mix with people who are not Christians, how do we expect to see the church grow? Um, we're not to keep this light to ourselves. The light is meant to be shone in the darkness. And so when it says have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, it just means very simply, we don't, we don't carry on in, in the same way as people who are engaged in the fruitless deeds of darkness. It doesn't mean that we don't associate with them. Friends, we have to associate with our neighbors, with the people who rap on our doors, with the, to the shopkeepers, to, to, to people and, and, and society in general. We, we, we need to rub shoulders with them. So, so negatively, the, the children of light, they have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. But positively, it does say this. have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention what disobedient, what the disobedient do in, in, in secret. Expose them, light exposes things, doesn't it? I love the story. Robert Louis Stevenson, the great Scottish author, I always wanted to read his books. Can you believe it? Just a number of years ago, um, I read Treasure Island. Yes, I know, I'm a big child. But, but what a great read it was, Treasure Island. I also tried to read, I, I couldn't get quite into it, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And many people believe that he was trying to show an analogy between the, the good that is within us and the, and, and the evil that is within us. But once again, that's another story, maybe a maybe another message, but he, he, he suffered as a child with um, asthmatic at attacks. And um, one night, I think it was in, 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 in Edinburgh, he, he saw the, uh, the old, you know, the old gas lighters, the, the gas used to come on and they used to come with a flame and they stuck it up to the, the gas lantern and whoosh. And, and one day he was looking out the window uh, uh, it was getting dark, obviously, and he and he and he noticed this man with the flame lighting lighting uh, the fire, um, and from down the stairs, he he heard his mother say, um, "Robert, what are you doing?" To which he replied, "I'm I'm looking at a man punching holes in the darkness." I like that. Oh, if only we would punch holes in the darkness. One other story. Uh, I'm going to close soon, but this is, a, this is a story, and I'm sure we'd want this to be true of all our lives. A.W. Milne was a missionary in New Guinea in the 19th century. It was inhabited at that time uh, by cannibals, but, but through his faithful testimony, many of these people became uh, humble servants of Jesus Christ. And when his ministry came to a, uh, an end, they, he, he went on to be with his Savior, they, they buried him in, in their midst. And they placed a marker over his grave which read, and listen to these words, here lies the remains of A.W. Milne. When he came to us, there was no light. And when he died, there was no darkness. What a testimony. When he came, there was no light. But when he died, there was no darkness. Because he lived the kind of life goodness, righteousness, truth, 
And friends, you can't live a life like that without making, a, making an, an impact upon the people that you meet. Some people will not like you for but other people will be attracted to it because light has the ability to attract people. At times, the children of life seem to be sleeping. That's why in verse 14, Paul says, for it, is, for it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, wake up, O sleeper, from, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. It's time to switch the lights on. It's time to live a life that's going to make a significant impact. I just want to read to you a few verses from uh, the book of Isaiah, and then I'm going to conclude, <clears throat> and then I'm going to pray. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Ah, isn't it the prayer of everybody in MPC that people will come to the light? People will come to our light. It's time to switch the lights on. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Maybe we could just bow our heads in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for that wonderful experience of conversion when you took us out of the darkness of this world and you transformed us into children of light. And because of that, we can no longer live in the shadow of our dark past, but we have to bring ourselves in line with that with which you have done in us. You have made us children of light. Help us by the lives that we live, goodness and righteousness and truth. Help us by that very life just to expose the deeds of darkness and make an impact in a world that seems to be getting darker. darker. Arise, shine, for our light has come. We ask this in the name of the one who said he was the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a good day. I hope it won't be too long before I see you in the flesh. Bless you. Well, uh, thank you, Dad, uh, for ministering uh, from the Word of God. And I think we could all agree that we all aspire and hope to aspire to become uh, children of the light who seek to, to live uh, the life that draws people to Christ. So thanks uh, once again for that, uh, Dad. I'm going to hand over to, to Phil and Dawn, and uh, they are going to lead us in uh, a time of breaking of bread. See you in a moment.
For those who don't know me, I am not distant and angry, but I am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father could ever, for I am your perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand. I am your provider and I will meet with all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope. Because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts towards you are countless as the sand upon the seashore. I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good for you, for you are my treasured possession. 
I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul. I want to show you great and marvellous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me and you will have the desires of your heart. For it is I who have gave you those desires. I am able to do more than you could ever possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in time of trouble. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I carry you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eye, and I will take away the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your father, and I love you, and even as I have loved my son Jesus, for Jesus is my beloved for you to, is revealed. He is the exact representative of my being. He comes to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you. I tell you that I am not counting your sins. The death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I love that you might that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me, and nothing will ever separate me again from, separate you again from my love. Come home, and I will throw you the biggest party in ever you've ever seen. I have always been your father and always will. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. And at the bottom it says, love from dad. And if after all that, you doubt God's love for you, look to Jesus on that cross. I'll pass you over to Phil now. Hi everyone. We are here today to take the bread and wine as our father instructed. And I'm reading from St. Mark chapter 14, verse 22 to 24. And it's, As they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for that, this short time with you. We know, Lord Jesus, that it is right that we take the bread and wine and we take it in you. But Lord, we come and we thank you, Lord, for your goodness towards us, for the things you do for us, Lord, for the surprises, for the blessings, Lord, that we get from you. And Heavenly Father, in this time lord of unsureness lord you have kept us safe and we ask thee lord that you'll continue to keep us safe through this time lord as we pray thee lord jesus you'll bless everyone lord that has watched this uh, recording and uh, that it will bless them to their hearts yes. and so heavenly father we thank you lord that as the days go on we will look for forward to hearing more and more about you Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Phil and Dawn, for uh, breaking bread with us. 
And uh, I, I, we all know that even though we're at different locations in our homes when we do this, there is something incredibly unifying in that simple act of taking of the cup, taking the bread, as we remind ourselves of our corporate identity as part of the body of Christ, wherever we are. Wherever we are. Just to give it a few announcements, guys, of things that are coming up. Obviously, uh, this morning we will have a Zoom uh, coffee morning straight at the ser- after the service at 11.45. We have a Bible, stu- uh, Bible study on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. As you know, we're continuing a, s- a study on angels and demons and our prayer meeting after that. And next Sunday, on our part of our online service, we're going to be starting a new series of teaching uh, titled Be- Becoming God's Showpiece. And uh, what I'm going to be doing, I'll be taking us to the first chapter of the book of Job and uh, just learning some important lessons from the life of Job of how our lives can become a showpiece uh, for God's glory. You know, I I recently came across uh, a, a quote by Winston Churchill, to Winston Churchill, and this is what he said, that the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity, but the optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. I'm going to say that again. The pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity, but the optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. Well, I I think we can all agree that these last six months have been difficult times, and it doesn't look as if those difficult times are going to come to an end anytime soon. So I believe, as what Winston Churchill says, that if we are to be optimistic, we need to find opportunities in the midst of our our difficulties. Well, I do have a little bit of a good news. We are going to start and start uh, start as of next uh, next Sunday a drop in cafe and it's going to ha- happen every Sunday all being well at 4 p.m. on Sunday afternoons. And in a moment, I will tell you how you can uh, register for that. We are going to do a little trial, Drop-In Cafe today, for certain people who've been invited, just to sort out a few teething issues and just give it it a go. But the purpose, really, of us doing this is just to provide opportunity for people to at least see each other, meet together. Although we're still working within the, the current restrictions of, of, uh, of the guidelines that, that, that are set by the government, we, we do need to do, and I feel it's really important, we need to do something, at least try at least get the ball rolling. And so a drop-in cafe is going to start officially as of next week. Now, if you are interested, if you want to get your name down for that, if you want to be a part of that, we have a booking system that's in place. And so I'm going to say to you this, if you want to uh, be here or you want to have a a slot for our drop-in cafe as of next uh, Sunday at four o'clock, then you need to phone David on the name, uh, on, the, on the number below. Say, so if you give David a ring on the number that's on the screen right now, and uh, make sure that you get your name to David before Friday this week. Okay, so it has to be before Friday this week. And so what David will do, he'll be able to uh, arrange the seating of who sits where in our drop-in cafe, and uh, at least then we can get things uh, up and running, okay? For, because we do have a limited capacity, uh, what we're going to do, if, uh, if there's more people than we can actually manage, uh, we'll kind of spill over to, to the following week. But at least it's a start, it's a way of us getting things up and running, and we will, we will take it from there. And I believe that once we, we do that, we can build on this, we can add to it, we can gradually start to develop it and uh, hopefully get to the, some sense of normality, though I'm sure, as we're all aware, it's not going to be like the normal we're used to. But listen, I, I want to thank you for being part of our service today. Hope you've had uh, an enjoyable experience in God's Word and our time uh, around the breaking of bread. And uh, I hope to see you uh, next week. God bless you and have a great uh, rest of the day and week. See you later. Bye.